Hi, everyone. I'm Bobby Wilson from Turnitin, and I'm here to give you a quick tour of our company, our business, our products, and our future. I'm subbing in for the boss, Chris Karen, today. Um, so diving right in, we celebrate our 20th birthday this year. We first came to market in 1998 with a plagiarism detection tool that remains the standard in the industry today and is the undisputed leader. A few years later, we were first to market as well with an online grading and feedback tool called Grademark that, again, it maintains leadership in its market today. We're based in the Bay Area, and we have 400 dedicated souls in eight offices around the world. Our, our footprint in the market is significant. We have paying customers in over 150 countries around the world. Our business model has been subscription-based from day one, and we have some very, very nice metrics. Our gross retention rate is in the high 90s, and our net retention rate stays above 100% consistently. Over the last few years, those wonderful metrics have allowed us to grow at over 20% per year, and we're confident, looking forward, that we can maintain growth of 15% per year into the foreseeable future. The scalability of our business allows us to grow our bottom line considerably faster than our top line, which is also great for our investors. At the moment, we're about a $125 million business chasing a $3 billion market. I'm not going to drag you through the timeline of our, of our history, which is you know, 20 years old now, so it's getting pretty long, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of different things. Over the last three years, we've invested significantly in our international presence. We now have physical offices in six different countries, and we have physical representation through individual sales reps and employees in many, many other countries around the world. And the second thing I'd like to highlight is that we were very happy a few months ago to welcome former Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan to our board of directors. And we're very happy to have him on board and looking forward to his contributions. So that's our company. Let's talk about our business for a minute. First and foremost, why do we exist? Our role is to help protect the integrity of the global education system. We live in societies that depend heavily on credentials. Do we want to confer a degree on a kid who didn't do the work? Do we want to hire a doctor or an engineer who may not possess the skills that their degree suggests that they should? Societies that depend heavily on credentials also create incentives to cut corners to achieve those, those um, credentials. And that becomes a test of integrity, not just of the individual, but of the system that educates them. The Oracle of Omaha, Mr. Buffett, has a wonderful saying that when he's hiring someone, he looks for three things, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if they don't have the first, you better hope they don't have the other two. The last thing you want in your organization is a smart, energetic person with no integrity. We don't believe that individuals are born with or without integrity. Like writing or mathematics, it's a skill that can be taught in the classroom. And our goal is to help educators impart those lessons on students and help students absorb those lessons on a level playing field. Learning about academic integrity begins at a fairly young age. We tend to peg it somewhere around fourth or fifth grade when students start to learn about information literacy. What information sources can they trust and should they trust and which one should they take with a grain of salt? When they get to grades six, seven, and eight, they start learning about things like summarization and paraphrasing and citation. But it's when they get to high school that the balance shifts a little bit. In high school, the onus is now on the institution to make sure that students have absorbed these skills and can apply them in their daily work. High schools have to make sure that their students are prepared for the next step in their life, which more often than not these days is higher education. The same basic premise applies in higher ed, but the picture gets a little bit more complex. Different from K-12, higher ed institutions are often held accountable for the behavior of their students. An academic misconduct scandal at an institution can have a very, very detrimental effect to their reputation and their brand. There was a study by HBS a couple of years ago, and I'm probably going to mangle the facts, but it was along the lines of, when a long-form article about academic misconduct hits the market about a specific institution, the next year, that institution can expect to a 10% drop in applicants. Higher ed institutions cannot afford this sort of scandal. 
Finding the right balance between education and risk mitigation is difficult, but for higher ed, it's critical. And we serve both sides of that equation. We have the best formative tools for teaching students how to behave with integrity, and we are the undisputed leader in mitigating risk for these institutions. Nobody can claim to prevent academic misconduct as well as we can. So let's talk about our products for a minute. If you know us at all, you probably know us for this. This is originality check, plagiarism detection, call it what you like. This is the backbone of our company, and it's the, the constant thread through our 20-year history. One of the, we have terrific workflows, we have terrific features and all that sort of thing, but when it comes to the efficacy of originality check, it really boils down to what is the content that you're comparing a submitted work against. We have a, a database of 900 million student papers that we have been collecting for the last 20 years. Now, why is that important? Here's why. When we detect plagiarism in a written work, in 70 to 80 percent of cases, the match is against another student paper. Students figured out a long time ago that they can't copy off of Wikipedia anymore and just turn it into their professor. But they still try to copy off of each other, and we still catch it. Now, of course, we also have the world's largest database of indexed web content. We have over 62 billion web pages in our database there. And as you reach the higher levels of academia, it also becomes more important to have higher level publications. So we have a database of 160 million scholarly articles and journals. It's particularly important for researchers and candidates for, for higher degrees. Originality Check is often paired with our grading and feedback tool into a, into a product that we call Feedback Studio. Feedback Studio is loved by teachers because it saves them time and it allows them to provide better, richer feedback to their students. We have a, a capability called QuickMark which allows them to just click and drag, and it allows them to very quickly provide meaningful feedback to a student in their paper. Students like it as well because they get their papers graded faster and they get better feedback from their teachers when they get them. So does it work? Yes, in a, in a nutshell. Um, the chart on the left shows what happens after an institution installs our product in their environment. And for the first several years, we see a dramatic drop in instances of plagiarism in their school. It doesn't take students long to figure out where the line is and how to actually behave with academic integrity. Next on our list is Revision Assistant. We launched this product two years ago, and Revision Assistant exists with really one mission. We want to help students learn to write better. If you talk to employers who are recruiting students straight out of undergrad, they will tell you that the writing skills coming out of colleges today are atrocious. If you talk to admissions offices, they will tell you that the writing skills coming into higher education are atrocious. This is a terrible problem that society is dealing with right now, and you can blame it on texting, you can blame it on tweeting, whatever it is, but the fact of the matter is we're not teaching students how to write. And the question is, why aren't we? What's happening? Teaching students to write really comes down to two things. Practice and rich, timely feedback. Students aren't writing enough. So why aren't they writing enough? If you'll bear with me, go on a quick journey with me. Think back to your high school English class. Think back to an assignment that your English teacher assigned to you. Maybe you took a week to write your essay, and then you turned it in to your teacher. What did your teacher do? Your teacher went home with a stack of papers this tall and, and uh, carried that home. And one of the statistics that I saw that really blew my mind was that when teachers walk home with that stack of papers, it takes them 17 hours to grade them. So if you're an English teacher and you're signing up to 17 hours of night and weekend work, every time you give an assignment to your students, how often are you gonna do that? The answer is about twice a semester. Students aren't writing enough because the burden on the teacher whenever they do is massive. So the teacher's taken the stack home and they started to plow their way through it. The first dozen papers, they do a really nice job. They provide very rich feedback. They get to the middle of the stack, they're getting a little lazier. By the end of the, by the, end of the pile, they're just scribbling a few quick comments in the margin and throwing the grade on top. The quality of the feedback that they give, ha the teachers are only human. It has to go down over time. 
So you as the student, two weeks later, three weeks later, you get your paper back. It's got a grade at the top, it's got a few comments scribbled in the margin. You take a quick look at the grade, you throw it in your backpack and you're done. You've already moved on. You're not looking to understand those comments and apply them to your next written work. This cycle does not promote learning how to write. This isn't something that works. So how do we fix it? Our approach is to scale teachers. The issue of teachers not assigning enough work stemming from the fact that it's too difficult to provide the feedback to students is something that we can solve. Here's how a revision assistant works. The teacher gives an assignment to a student, a student writes a first draft of their essay, and they click a button and receive something we call a signal check. The signal check gives them a score on each of the four parts of the specific grading rubric for that assignment. But we don't stop there. We also go into their assignment and we give them very spe specific, actionable feedback on their work. If they were writing a persuasive essay, we might highlight a sentence and then tell them, you need to cite more evidence for this point. That's the level of feedback that we're giving them. Students receive that feedback and what do they do with it? Right then and there, they revise their paper. They write another draft and then they can click the button again and get another signal check. And so they're writing, they're getting rich feedback, they're writing more, they're getting more feedback, and the quality of their writing is improving, and they're understanding what good looks like. It's an amazing process to watch. I didn't have this slide a year ago, and I'm really excited to have it now. Students that use our product, we're seeing 89% of them write an average of almost eight drafts Students are writing dramatically more when they use our product. And between the first draft and the last, their scores improve almost a full point on a four point scale. This is real improvement in their writing. The product's also predictive. The way that they perform when using our product is very indicative of how they're gonna perform on standardized tests. And schools who use our product are performing better they're improving faster than the population at whole, materially so. So really exciting efficacy data that we've gotten on this product over the past year. Education doesn't stand still and neither do we. Very hot area, as you all know, is computer science. Plagiarism is rampant in programming. Part of that stems from the ethos in programming which says it's generally okay to borrow someone else's code when writing a program. The idea and the, the goal is to write the best program and if you need to borrow code for that, great. But that solves a problem for, that creates a problem for instructors who are trying to, to find out whether or not their students are picking up the lessons they've learned. And so in the academic setting, you still wanna control plagiarism greatly. We now have a product coming to market very shortly that solves this problem for computer science teachers. It's specifically tuned for computer code. Equally exciting, is this issue of contract cheating, also known as ghostwriting. If you're a lazy student who is attending a university that uses our product, you can't really plagiarize anymore. We've solved that problem. It's, it's just too difficult. It's more work to beat us than it is to just do your own work. So what's a cheater to do? Turns out it's actually very easy to hire someone to write your paper for you. There are 150 companies around the world who you can, with a click of a button, have them write pretty much any paper for you on any subject. It is phenomenal how diverse this industry has become in a fairly short while. It's pulling in hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And estimates of the amount of written work that's being ghostwritten range from 2% of all submitted works to double digits, which is just scary in a lot of respects. This is a very, very difficult problem. It's hard to spot, and once you feel like one of your students has, has employed a ghostwriter for their work, it's equally difficult to prove. And the, the opportunity here for scandal is massive. And if you wanna see a, a textbook case of that, Google the My Master Scandal in Australia. This is, this is prevalent in, in universities in ways that nobody wants to admit and it's difficult because it's so hard to solve. But we've cracked it. 
stay tuned for more on this one. So this is my last slide, and then I'll shut up and take questions. Um, we've got all these great products in the market. How else can we improve the lives of our, of our customers? One of the most vexing things about dealing with academic integrity issues is once you have it, the process to deal with it is, also, is often very, very painful. What if you had an easy button? What if your student submitted their work, your red flag went off, and you said, we need to take a closer look at this? What if you could just click a button and it kicked off the academic review workflow? And that you could just follow that academic review workflow from start to finish right there in the system. That's what that box on the right is, case management. It takes a lot of the pain out of dealing with academic integrity issues and allows, uh, allows institutions to coalesce around a standardized process that ensures fairness for all. So that's it for me. Um, we've had a great 20 years, and uh, we're looking forward to the next decade as well. I'm happy to take any quick questions in the minute I've got left. All right. Oh, there's one in the back. It's actually in market, sorry, the question is, when is the computer code plagiarism coming to market? It's in market in beta today. We have several beta customers that are using it right now. We expect to make it generally available this summer. Okay, any other last questions? Yes, sir. What do we attribute our growth to? Um, we have a really compelling value proposition, frankly. Um, teachers love us. We have a great um, retention rate and pull from both the bottom, but administrators also love the fact that they can sleep at night worrying less about academic uh, integrity scandals. So it's just generally, um, we, we've got people who love us from the pulling from the bottom and, and pulling from the top as well. So, yep. Yes, sir. Yes, we are still a private company. We are in year four of our hold. We're owned primarily by Insight Venture Partners and GIC. And m my best understanding at this point is that they're looking to trade out in about a year. Okay. All right, thank you very much.